Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on calculating the abundance of isotopes using mass spectra. So in this video we're just going to go through a worked example but this video is going to be slightly different um, because what we're actually going to do is we're going to calculate the, um, the abundance of the isotope rather than identify what the element is and these are a little bit trickier. There's a bit of algebra in here um, so I'm going to kind of show you in a the kind of the best way or the simplest way that I know really um, to try and work these things out. So let's go through the question first. So it says a mass spectrum of a sample of indium, and probably never heard of that one before, um, shows two peaks at MZ113 and MZ115. And the relative atomic mass of this sample of indium is 114.5. Right. And then it says calculate the relative abundance of the two isotopes. So this is a bit strange, like I say, because normally you're given the abundance of the isotope uh, and all you have to do is work out the relative atomic mass. So we're actually just going to do it backwards. But there is a little bit of algebra and I'm going to bring in bid mass as well. Yes, it's that stuff from GCSE. So um, B stands for brackets. E is, uh, sorry, E. I is an indice. Uh, D is division. M is multiply. A is addition and S is subtraction. So um, there's a little bit of GCSE maths here as well, but it shouldn't be too bad. So you don't need to don't need to cry yet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, come up with this formula. Remember the formula to work out the relative atomic mass of something from its isotopes um, is literally the mz of the number. So for example, 115, and you multiply that by the percentage abundance or the abundance that we're using. Now, no, most of the time it's percentage abundance because it just keeps it a little bit easier. So, for example, it would be 115 times by 30, for example, that might be its abundance. But the difference is we don't have that, but we're still going to use the same formula. So, let's write this in. We're going to do 113 first, because that's our first abundance. We don't know what the abundance is, so we're going to use the letter X. So, X just represents whatever the abundance is. And then we're going to add that to the next abundance, which is 100, so the next isotope, should I say, which is 115. But again, we don't know what the abundance is. Um, but we do know that the abundance of this element here will be whatever that element is, um, but it'll be 100 minus whatever the abundance is of this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 100 minus x which goes there. Now the 100 represents 100%. So in other words, if we add up both of these isotopes, both of these isotopes make up 100% of all the isotopes in this element of indium. Okay, so we know that this one will have a value and this value will be 100 minus whatever that value is because that's just what's left. Okay, um, so that's fine. And normally what we do is we divide them by 100 because we're going to say this is 100%. For these types of examples, just use it as a percentage. It makes it so much easier. Um, so let's divide by 100, uh, and that equals, because we know our um, relative atomic mass is 114.5, okay? So that's fine. That's what we've got so far. And this might look a little bit familiar uh, to you when you're working out the relative atomic mass of an abundance, uh, relative atomic mass, sorry, of, a, of, a, uh, of an element from its isotopes, okay? So this is where the mass bit comes in. We're going to use bid mass. Now bid mass, like I say, is the order of operations that we do. Um, so for example, we start with B, brackets, and we do have brackets, so we need to sort the brackets out first. Um, and this is pretty straightforward, it's just expanding brackets. You can see we've got 115, and we're going to multiply that by 100, and we're going to multiply 115 by minus X as well, okay? So we're going to rearrange, uh, or rewrite out, sorry, this equation. So the 113x is just the same, so that's 113x. And we're going to add that to, that's 115 times by 100, which is going to be 11500. Uh, and that's going to be um, minus 115x. Okay, so we've expanded our bracket. Divide that by 100, because that's just still the same. Uh, and that equals 114.5, because we haven't done anything to that. All right, so what we've done is we've expanded our brackets, which is great. Okay, the next thing we need to do is an indice. There is no indices in here, there's no powers, so I don't know that, so that's fine. We've gone to the next bit, which is division. Now, our division bit is um, divide by 100. So to get rid of divide by 100, you just multiply by 100. So we multiply the left-hand side of the equal sign by 100 to effectively cancel that out. 
We've got to do exactly the same to the other side as well, to the right hand side. So we're going to multiply 114.5 by 100 as well. Uh, and we're just going to drag that down here. Da, da, da. There we go. Um, so we're going to put 113, 113x plus 11500 um, minus 115x. All right. Let's divide by 100 goes because effectively we multiply that side by 100. But we've got to multiply that by 100 as well. And so that's going to give us 11450 because we multiply that side by 100. Okay, so it's looking a little bit better now, thankfully. Okay, so then what we have to do is, because we've got obviously all of this, all of these parts here, we're then gonna collect like terms. So this is very similar to algebra. So we're gonna take these two numbers here and we're gonna collect these two together. Uh, and we've got 113x minus 115x is gonna be minus 2x. So again, let's just draw it here. So it's minus 2x. As you can see, 113x minus 115, uh, plus, this still remains the same, 11500 equals uh, 11450. And there we are. Okay, so we're getting there. We're making this a little bit smaller. Just remember where we started from. So it's getting a lot, lot better. Okay, next thing we wanna do is get our x's on their own. So we need to move this number here, plus 11500, and shift this across onto this side here. So we're gonna subtract 11500 from this side, because we just do the opposite, but we subtract it away from that side as well. So again, let's just, um, I'm running out of space here. Let's just come down here. Okay, so we're gonna have minus two X equals and we're going to have 11450 minus 11500. So remember, we do the opposite. If we want to get rid of it, we do the opposite. So we subtract 11500, 11500 from this side, and we do the same on that side. And that's why we've got this. So obviously, 11450 minus 11500 uh, is basically going to give us 2x equals, or minus 2x equals minus 50. That means exactly the same as 2x equals 50. So that's just the same thing. So 2x equals 50. Much better, obviously, to put it positives because we can't have negatives in this. So it just means the same thing, mathematically. And um, then what we have to do is obviously simplify, or, or solve it, sorry, should we say. So x equals 25. Uh, and we have an abundance. So this number here, x, X would fit into here, so 113, so the isotope which had uh, 113 actually has an abundance of 25 because that's the value of X, and the isotope of 115 has the value of an isotope of 100 minus X, which is going to be uh, 75 because X holds the value of 25. So what we've done here is we've worked out the isotopes uh, or the, the, the abundance, sorry, uh, percentage abundance of each isotope here. Um, so we've got 25%, 113, and 115, uh, sorry, 75% of uh, 115. Um, but that's it, that's how you work it out. Um, make sure you're methodical with your working and make sure you do things bit by bit if you're not comfortable with maths, because it can get a little bit confusing as you could potentially see, but um, the equation is exactly the same. And I hope that you've managed to see that from there. But uh, that's it. Bye-bye.